Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror film, 1922. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. 1922 is a film based on the novel of Stephen King. This movie is not for the faint of heart. Wilfred James, a rancher in Nebraska, claims 80 acres of farmland that have been in his family for ages. His better half, Arlette, possesses 100 acres of land willed to her by her dad. Wilfred hates the idea of living in a city, yet Arlette is dissatisfied with ranch life and needs to move to Omaha. She tries to offer her territory to a hog raiser for use as a pig homestead and slaughterhouse. Wilfred's property will not be farmable on the off chance that she does as such, and he will be compelled to sell too. Wilfred resorts to controlling his teenage child, Henry, into assisting him with killing Arlette. The dark plot of the movie is told through stunning cinematography that gets you screaming at the top of your lungs. This film is perfect for you if you are a fan of Stephen King and enjoy ghost stories and thrillers. The movie starts with old Wilfred walking in an old American town. He enters his apartment and listens to the walls. He sits down at a table and writes down his confession. Wilfred begins to write his confession in a hundred acre land in Hemingford, Nebraska that is willed to his wife Arlette and inherited after her father's death. Wilfred intends to add his 80 acre farm to this hundred acre and hopes someday to pass it on to his son, Henry, and the succeeding generation of his kid. Wilfred and Henry harvest corn on their field and Arlette prepares lemonade for them. Old Wilfred narrates that his wife never really liked living in the countryside. Over dinner, Arlette talks about them moving to the city. Wilfred opposes the idea and his son agrees. Wilfred tells his wife that she should live with her mother. Arlette says that she would never leave him with his father's land. Wilfred offers to buy the land for his wife. Arlette says that it would be too long for Wilfred to pay the land to her fully. Arlette talks about selling her land to Farrington's because they have a more generous offer. Arlette says they should combine their lands, sell all of it, split the money, and divorce. Arlette says their son should stay with her, and Wilfred tells her that it is unfair. Old Wilfred narrated that he thought about telling the officials, but his anger held him back. He hates his wife. Wilfred goes to his wife while she is doing laundry. He tells his wife that he will not sell the land without a fight. He stares at the well and contemplates killing his wife. Wilfred looks for his son and sees him with a girl. Henry is now courting Shannon and Wilfred considers this as his advantage. Wilfred and Henry go to their cornfield. Wilfred convinces his son that he should help him murder Arlette. Wilfred shaves his face by the window. He sees Henry leave the house. Arlette asks his son for a kiss, but his son seems aloof to his mother. At night, Wilfred is sitting by their porch. Henry seems to have a lot on his mind and he asks Wilfred for a beer. In the morning on the cornfield, Henry asks questions for his father about murder and religion. Over dinner, Henry is still angry at his mother. Arlette slaps his son and talks about opening a dress shop in the city. While hanging out on their porch, Wilfred tells his wife that he likes the idea of moving to the city. Arlette is pleased about his husband changing his mind and the family celebrates. Arlette talks about Henry's relationship with Shannon and says very naughty things. Henry walks out and he seems to take offense to the words that came out of her mother's mouth. Arlette tucks in her bed, really drunk. Henry talks to his father and he seems to be hurt by what his mother is saying about his girlfriend. Wilfred convinces his son to help him with his plan of murdering Arlette. Wilfred prepares a sharp knife beside his sleeping wife. Henry gets a thick blanket and he covers his mother's face with it. Arlette struggles for her life while her husband slits her throat. Old Wilfred narrates that he regrets murdering his wife. Henry helps his father carry his mother's dead body to bring it outside. Henry faints, and his father continues to pull the body to the well. Wilfred drops the body onto the well while Henry watches. Wilfred asks his son to prepare cleaning materials and help him clean a crime scene. They continue to clean the bedroom floors and every inch of their house, to scrub every drop of Arlette's blood. Henry tells his father that he will not go to school tomorrow because people might notice him and find out he did something wrong. Wilfred agrees and helps him make an excuse while he is tying up the bed that is filled with blood. He goes to the well and he sees his wife on the bed. He sees a rat entering his wife's mouth and he throws a suitcase at the rat. Wilfred assembles his wife's belongings to make it look like she has left her family. Wilfred is setting up his fence when Farrington's lawyers show up at his farm. Wilfred refuses the handshake that the lawyer is offering and refuses to invite the man to his house. The lawyer looks for Arlette and Wilfred tells them that she has left them. Wilfred fails to convince the lawyer. The lawyer argues that it is bizarre considering the amount that his client is willing to pay for Arlette's land. Henry helps his dad with the story that Wilfred is telling. The lawyer threatens Wilfred and leaves the farm. After the visitors leave, they start planning to fill the well to hide Arlette's body. They get their cow and put it on top of the well. The cow falls, Wilfred shoots it, and they fill up the well with dirt. 
The town sheriff visits them and asks them if Arlette comes back. The sheriff continues to search Arlette's closet and notices that Arlette left her denim pants. Henry butts in the conversation and tells the sheriff that his mother also took her fine jewelry and photos of her parents. The sheriff leaves their farm without any doubt about the story of Wilfred and his son. Old Wilfred narrates that maybe Satan rewards them for the murder, because they have a good season and bountiful corn harvest. Shannon asks Wilfred if his son is sick, because she is sensing something different from him. Wilfred tells her that Henry is healthy and loves him. Shannon doubts that Henry might be seeing another girl. Wilfred tells her that his son does not have extra time to see somebody else. Henry tells his father that he will never tell anyone about what happened. Wilfred tells him to go to sleep and calls him Hank. Henry remembers that his mother hates it when Wilfred calls him Hank. Wilfred gets awakened by the sound of their cow mooing loudly. He goes to their barn and sees a rat chewing his cow's nipple. The rat goes inside a tube that connects to the well, and Wilfred seals this tube with cement the following morning. Later that day, Henry tells his dad the news that he gets Shannon pregnant. Old Wilfred narrates that he hates Shannon's dad Harlan because he is jealous of him. Harlan goes to Wilfred and tells him that he plans to send Shannon to a Catholic school and put the baby up for adoption. Harlan asks Wilfred for $75 for his share of the cost. Wilfred says that he does not have any money. Harlan tells him that he should make a way to get money. Wilfred tells Henry about Harlan's plan. Henry tells his dad that he and Shannon should elope. Henry reasons they got away with the murder. They will get away with this too. Wilfred tells Henry that when a woman is carrying a baby, it makes the woman feel wise that any man cannot understand. He tells Henry that he should not ask Shannon to run off with him. Henry tells his dad that he cannot tell him what he should do and walks away. Wilfred grabs Henry and says that the 180 acres are useless when nobody would inherit. The next day, Henry goes to school and Wilfred starts to look for money all over the house. He goes to the bank and tries to loan $35 and the bank offers him more. Wilfred says that he will think about it. Henry takes his truck and leaves a note saying that he had run away, and if he tries to send a sheriff to look for him, he will confess the murder. One day when he is reading a book, water drops down from the ceiling and startles him. He is with his wife's mannequin, and he puts it in his basement. Rats are seen all over the basement. A ghost of his wife and rats haunt Wilfred. A sheriff visits Wilfred and reports to him that Henry steals from a grocery store in the town. Wilfred says that he did not raise his son to do those things and his son would not do anything like that. Wilfred goes to the bank and gets the mortgage of $750. He is looking for his wife's money in her closet and a rat bites his hand. He steps on the rat and he drops his money all over the floor. Rats still haunt old Wilfred as the rats open a hole in his apartment's walls. Wilfred gets his hand infected. It is a harsh winter. Wilfred is alone at his house and his wound worsens. He wants to go to the hospital, but he cannot start his car. He opens the stove for heat the door opens and shuts. Wilfred sees his bloody wife outside. He runs to the basement. Arlette's ghost follows him with a pack of rats. Old Wilfred narrates that the ghost tells him things that only a dead woman knows. Henry continues his life of crime, robbing stores all over the town. He helps Shannon escape the convent, and they become the sweetheart bandits. One day, they rob a man that has a gun and shoot Shannon. They steal a car and find a cabin. Shannon dies in the cold with her eyes wide open. Henry puts his sweater on Shannon and kills himself with a bullet through his head. The sheriff brings Wilfred to the hospital and gets his hand amputated. The sheriff tells him that somebody found a woman's remains that he suspects to be Arlette's. Wilfred still does not confess to the sheriff and agrees with him. Henry's body arrives at Hemingford and his father waits for him. The media with camera and notebook swarms up to Wilfred while he waits for the train. Wilfred identifies his son's body. He sees that most of his face is missing. He tells the embalmer to put his son in their most pleasing coffin, and he is willing to pay for it. He kisses his son for the last time and leaves. He visits Shannon's wake, and the chapel is full of people. When it is time for his son's wake, he is the only one sitting there. He looks at the back of the chapel and sees his wife with a swarm of rats. He goes to his home with a hole in the ceiling. There is a cow inside living with him. Wilfred goes to Harlan to sell his house, and Harlan tells him that he hears gossip from the neighbor that he is living miserably. Harlan tells him that his wife also left him. He advises Wilfred to sell the land to the bank instead. Wilfred does not like the idea because the bank would sell the property to the Farringtons, and he has so much hatred. Harlan tells him to leave and never come back to him again. When Wilfred gets home, he sees his cow dying in the cold. He gets his shotgun to mercy kill his cow. He sees rats and shoots them before killing his cow. A swarm of rats haunts old Wilfred while he is writing his confession. 
He narrates that he is forced to sell his farm at an insanely low price, and Harlan holds onto his property until 1925, and the bank takes his house. Wilfred goes to Omaha Hall's pallets for 14 months, but stops because the rats follow him. He says that it took him two years to drink up all of the money he got from selling his wife's land. He visits all of the places that Henry robbed to apologize. Wilfred regrets all the decisions that led him to live a miserable life. The movie ends with the ghosts of Arlette, Shannon, and Henry of the Knife. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your fun for today.